year after the initial application to Kickstarter, I received another email from them. They had reviewed our campaign and approved its relaunch. I was so excited. I called my family in the middle of the night to tell them the news. I knew at that time that we had a good, sellable product. However, I was also aware that our marketing had been rather poor. I thus started to learn more about digital marketing, especially that on Facebook, and began investing in it. I first searched for potential customers online, mostly Americans between the ages of 25 and 35, starting their careers in the corporate world. Once I collected a database of about 5,000 potential customers, we launched our first Kickstarter campaign. We posted about it on all our social media, sent an email alert to our, to our contacts, and achieved great success. We collected 58,000 US dollars. The success on Kickstarter sparked the interest of the media and increased our visibility among potential customers. The orders kept flying in. With the first Kickstarter campaign, we gathered about 1,500 orders. Sales are great once you are on Kickstarter. When the campaign ends, though, you are on your own. Immediately after the campaign, we only sold between 50 and 100 tea holders per month. But I didn't give up. I continued investing in digital marketing. By the end of 2016, we were thus already selling about 300 tea holders per month. We sold another 2,000 during our second Kickstarter campaign. But the number of orders dropped significantly after this campaign as well. We still sold about 300 items monthly. With digital marketing, we managed to increase these numbers to 500 or 600 orders per month. Once we reached the milestone of having sold 5,000 tea holders, I decided to ask our customers about their experience with the product. About 80% said that the product was great, it solved their problem and they used it at work daily. One tenth said that the product was alright and that they used it for special occasions such as weddings. However, there was also about 10% of those who were really critical of the product. I recognize this as a new business opportunity and use the negative reviews as a starting point for developing a new product, the S holder. We worked on improving the product for a couple of months. We ordered new clips and regulators and even introduced additional product colors. These were not determined by our team though. They were selected by our customers through social media. More specifically, we asked our Instagram followers which colors of the S holder they would like to have. Based on their responses, we then selected the three colors they requested the most, because these were the ones that they would actually buy. The product development process resulted in the final S holder and a new Kickstarter campaign. It does not matter what your height is or how long or short your shirt is. S holders will make it look perfect by using regulators and adjusting it to the correct size, which will ensure that your shirt stays perfectly tucked in, even when you stretch or kneel. The second Kickstarter campaign was even more successful than the first. We collected more than 100,000 US dollars, which was quite incredible. This was the result of, firstly, having built a community on social media, both on Facebook and Instagram, secondly, developing an improved product for individuals who had already bought it, and thirdly, co-designing the product with our customers based on their needs and wants. These three factors helped us accomplish and exceed all our goals for the second Kickstarter campaign in only a few days after its launch. Overall, a consumer focus truly brought our company great success. Our first followers were my friends and family. We later focused on gaining more followers internationally. We initially approached them through Facebook advertising. We showed them a photo or a video of our product on their Facebook profiles and if they liked it, they would visit our Facebook page. There we tried to get them even more interested in what we do so that they would start following us. This was how we slowly grew our follower base on Facebook. We also used Instagram, but we had to slightly adjust our strategy to gain followers there. We contacted influential brands in our business, such as Gentleman Lifestyle and Man Fashion, that have several million Instagram followers each. We asked them how much it would cost to advertise our product on their Instagram profiles, and always managed to negotiate a deal. This was when the magic happened. When these brands posted about our product on their profiles, we started gaining many followers, sometimes between 500 and 1000 per post. 
We therefore tested more and more Instagram profiles. We wanted to see which worked best for attracting followers to our social media profiles. With this, we ended up building a follower base of more than 80,000 people. To put this into perspective, before the first Kickstarter campaign, we only had about 5,000 followers potentially willing to buy our product. Between the first and the second campaign, this number jumped to 50,000 followers. This was due to Facebook advertising and Instagram partnership with other brands. However, Facebook and Instagram are both constantly introducing improvements. This means that you have to stay up to date on these improvements and test whether they generate better sale results for you. While it takes up quite some time, constantly following these channels is crucial for one's ability to adjust to the market and achieve the best results possible. Many people are still oblivious to the importance of internet business and digital marketing. In my experience, however, internet can be a rather powerful tool if you know how to use it wisely. You can elevate any business to a higher level with digital marketing and social networks. Internet changed the possibility to become a global entrepreneur tremendously. Social networks such as Facebook and Instagram are not only useful for B2C sales, but are also for branding, B2B sales and partner search. We establish most of our partnership based on boutiques, franchises or other businesses noticing us in the media. Reading about our success made them realize that they could profit from selling our products as well. Because of our global media presence, potential business partners mostly contacted us on their own initiative and inquired whether we would be willing to work with them. Our first partner came from Denmark. They initially ordered only between 20 and 30 items per month. As the sales grew monthly, so did the orders. Today this partner is thus our biggest franchise that now regularly orders several hundred items per month. In addition to this partnership, we also managed to enter physical stores, first to Nara Kamichi in Slovenia and then to stores in Finland, Rotterdam in the Netherlands and New York in the United States. There's an interesting story behind our New York presence. I was there for one afternoon and did not want to waste any time. I went from store to store to convince their management that they absolutely needed our product. I told them that what we had was the best product and it achieved record sales in America. I managed to get into two boutiques, which was amazing, especially since this was the first time that I went to a store and requested to meet with the manager in order to sell them something in person. We are currently present in Europe, in Hungary, the Netherlands and Scandinavia, and have a partnership with Amazon to cover the entire US. We are still learning about other markets, but wish to enter them in the future as well. Our most successful sales channel at the moment is by far Amazon. This is followed by online sales. A smaller share is recorded in physical stores, which represent approximately 5% of our total sales. Mm -hmm.